Welcome back. In this segment, we will discuss a very important concept for this course, and that is the concept of limits and tolerance. We will repeatedly use this concept in many topics in this course when designing different types of tooling uh, that we will discuss in this course. Whenever specifying the size of a part or component on an engineering drawing, the designer specifies uh, what is called the basic size. For example, 0.438 in this case is the basic size for this part, a diameter of 0.438. Practically, it is impossible to make each component equal to the basic size that is mentioned on an engineering drawing. There are some variations in the manufacturing process uh, because of which it is very tedious or impossible to make a component or a part exactly equal to the basic size. And even if we assume that we can make every part equal to the basic size, it is very, very difficult to measure it uh, according to the uh, level of accuracy that is mentioned on the drawing. And practically, it is not required actually to make every part equal to the basic size. Because there is some variation allowed in the size of each part, uh, depending upon the functional requirements of that part. So that allowed variation in the size of a, of a part is called tolerance. Now there are different ways to show this variation, this allowed variation in the size of a part. So what is shown here is unilateral tolerance or the dimensions are unilateral dimensions. So there is no variation allowed on the upper side in the basic size of this part, but there is some variation allowed uh, towards the lower side. So 0.438 plus, 00, plus 0 0.000 means uh, the upper limit of the size will be 0.438 and the lower limit is in this case 0.433. So upper limit and lower limit. So we cannot make this uh, part, uh, this size greater than 0.438 or smaller than 0.433. Uh, on the right side, this hole has a basic size of 0.19. The upper limit is 0 0.01 and the lower limit is uh, 0 0.00. So that means we can make this hole maximum to the size of 0 0.20 and on the lower side equal to 0.19. So this is the upper limit of the size and this is the lower limit of the size. So in both cases, we have unilateral dimensions or unilateral tolerance. The technically, the word tolerance actually means the difference between upper limit or lower limit. So total variation allowed is called tolerance. So in this case, the total variation allowed is 0 0.005. So that is the tolerance, the difference of upper limit and lower limit of size. And here, the tolerance will be 0 0.01. In the figure below, in figure B, the basic size is again 0.438, but here the variation allowed is in both directions. So it is plus minus 0 0.005. So we can make uh, the size equal to 0.443 on the upper side or 0 four, uh, three, three on the lower side. And in this case, the tolerance will be equal to 0 0.010. So difference between upper limit and lower limit. But the type of tolerance here or the type of uh, dimension here is bilateral dimension. We can uh, have some variation on both sides of the basic uh, uh, size on the upper side of basic size as well as on the lower side of the basic size. And this uh, variation is equal on the upper as, a, as well as on the lower side. And this one, uh, this figure is showing bilateral tolerance that is not equal. 
So we have 0 0.438 plus 0 0.007 minus 0 0.003. So you can easily calculate that upper limit of size here will be 0 0.445 and the lower will be 0 0.435, right? So in this way, we can calculate the upper limit, lower limit, and the tolerance. So tolerance here will be equal to actually uh, this one, that will be 0 0.010, but the upper limit of size will be different and the lower limit of size will also be different. So I, I hope you have got the basic idea that we can have uh, the tolerance on one side of the basic size. So that is unilateral tolerance as is shown in figure, figure above, figure A, or we can have bilateral tolerance. So unilateral tolerance, bilateral tolerance or bilateral dimension, but these are equal bilateral uh, dimensions or unequal bilateral dimensions. We can also mention the upper and lower limit of size in a different way as is shown on the, on the left side that we don't need to mention the basic size. We can simply mention the upper limit of size and the lower limit of size. So upper limit of size is mentioned above and the lower limit of size is mentioned below. So that is also a way to, to show the limits of a size without specifying the basic size. So the, Manufacturer does not need to make any calculations uh, from the basic size. He or she can directly read them from the drawing. So upper limit is written above, lower limit is written below. And if, if you are writing in a right left uh, format, so the lower limit of size is written on the left and upper limit on the right. So lower limit on the left and upper limit of size on the right. So this is also one of the ways to show the limits of size. Another important concept is what is called MMC and LMC, maximum material condition and least material condition that directly relates to the limits of size. So this one is an external feature. So maximum material that we can have in this part <clears throat> within the limits allowed will be 0.443. So that is the upper limit of size and that is also called maximum material condition. The minimum material that we can have in this component will be when this part is made according to the lower limit. So lower limit of size in this case will be equal to 0.433. So that is also called least material condition. Now this will be opposite in the case of a, of a, in, of a hole or any other internal feature. So here the upper limit of size will be equal to uh, 0.196 and that is the least material condition. So when we have the largest hole made, so hole is a hollow feature. So material in this part will be minimum when this the hole is made according to the largest size. So that is 0.196. So that is least material condition for this part. And the lower limit of hole in this case will be equal to uh, 0.19 minus 0 0.006. So that will be 0 0.184. So that will be the smallest hole. So that will correspond to the maximum material condition because the material in this part or component will be maximum when this hole is made as per the lower limit of size. So it is just the opposite. For uh, external features, the upper limit is MMC and the lower limit is LMC for holes. The upper limit is LMC and the lower limit is MMC. So this is a very important concept that we will require uh, in this course. Okay, so a couple of other examples of upper and lower limit and tolerance are given on this slide, so you can go through them if required. And here are formal definition of uh, MMC and LMC. A maximum material limit is that limit of size that 
uh, provide the maximum amount of material for that part. Normally, it is the maximum limit of size, maximum limit of size for an external dimension or the minimum limit of size for an internal dimension. LMC is that limit of size that provides the minimum amount of material for that part. Normally, it is the minimum limit of size or lower limit of size for an external dimension and maximum or upper limit of size for an internal dimension. So what we discussed in the previous slides were dimensional limits or dimensional tolerance. Another very important concept for this course is the concept of geometric tolerances. So as we cannot make or it is not required to make uh, every component as per basic size, we will have some variation in that. Same is true for geometric features. It is not possible or actually not uh, required sometimes to make something exactly flat, some surface exactly flat, or some feature exactly circular. So we, we allow some variation in geometric features as well. So here are examples of such geometric features. Straightness, flatness, roundness, cylindricity, parallelism, perpendicularity. And there are other uh, features as well, like feature of position, run out, et cetera. So we have grouped these geometric features in, in different categories. So some of these geometric tolerances relate to the, relate to the geometric features of form. Some are geometric features of orientation, some are geometric features of location, and others are geometric features of runout. So you can just go through the definition of each of these features. I, I will not be going into detail. But note down one important point is that these geometric features of form do not require any, any datum. Datum is the reference surface or reference line. But the geometric features of orientation do require. So if we are talking about the parallelism of a surface, we need to specify the datum, the reference surface with respect to which we are specifying the parallelism of another surface. And then we allow some variation in that parallelism. The same applies to perpendicularity. So if we are talking about the perpendicularity of a, of a feature, so we need to specify the reference from which the perpendicularity will be measured. Same is true for angularity or profile of a line or a surface. And uh, same applies to some other features as well. Uh, very important with respect to this course are these geometric features of uh, position, circular runout and total runout, uh, apart from, of course, these geometric features, especially flatness, parallelism, perpendicularity, and off and on, we, we will require some other features as well. Now, the question is, as we mentioned, the dimensional tolerances in different ways, just like something, for example, 0.438 plus minus 0 0.005, or uh, upper limit of size written above and lower limit of size written below. So what is the way to specify geometric tolerances on an engineering drawing? So these are some important uh, points to consider when specifying geometric tolerances on an engineering drawing. So we need to specify these uh, details uh, in a rectangular frame and we need to specify the characteristic symbol. We need to specify the tolerance value and it is preceded by this uh, symbol of, uh, for the diameter if the zone is circular or cylindrical and preceded by S and this symbol of uh, uh, diameter if the zone is spherical. Later or later identifying the datum or datum systems is also required if it is a geometric feature that requires the datum to be specified as well. So here are two examples. So on the left side, we are having the geometric feature of flatness. So 
we have this rectangular frame. On the left side is the symbol for that geometric feature and on the right side is the tolerance value for that geometric feature. As flatness does not require any datum, so we haven't specified the datum surface here. So this is the total tolerance value in the unit used for linear dimensions. So if the linear dimensions are in, for example, inches, then this tolerance will be in inch. If these uh, values are in millimeters, then this tolerance will be in millimeters. On the right side is the geometric feature of, of concentricity. So again, the symbol of geometric feature, the tolerance allowed and the datum surface. And you can see that here in the case of flatness, we didn't have any symbol before the tolerance value, but in the case of concentricity, we have a symbol of diameter because tolerance zone in this case will be uh, having some, some circular orientation. Now the concept of tolerance zone is very important. We will not be going into details of tolerance zone here, but uh, uh, that is provided uh, with examples in, uh, in the reading material as well, uh, because the tolerance zone sometimes plays very important role in designing a part, uh, just like in the case of uh, uh, limit gauges, we will see that in the, uh, in the relevant module. So especially in the case of inspection tooling, the concept of tolerance zone is very important. So here are a few examples. I, I will not be going into detail. So the geometric feature of straightness, so symbol plus tolerance value, symbol and tolerance value. If we have uh, a tolerance, uh, geometric tolerance that requires datum, so this figure is showing that this hole should be parallel to this hole and the variation in parallelism allowed is 0.2. So this is the feature being measured and this is the reference feature that is designated using X. And this is the way to designate the datum feature using a two-headed arrow. Uh, let's uh, look at another example. So in this case, this hole, the axis of this hole should be perpendicular to, to the axis of this hole. So perpendicularity symbol, and this is the datum feature in this case, this hole, and the variation allowed in the perpendicularity is 0.1. Just one more example of some other feature. So if we have related to position, yes, this one. So let's uh, have a look at uh, on the example uh, on the left side. So this is the geometric feature of uh, position. And uh, these, this is the upper limit of size of each of these four holes and the lower limit of size. And these holes should be equispaced. And, uh, and the variation in the position of centers of these holes with respect to each other allowed is 0 0.002. So you can just go through this example on the right side. So it is also uh, specifying the geometric feature of, of position. And we can use words on drawings as we discussed earlier that these four holes should be equispaced. So ins instead of uh, uh, mentioning dimensions, we can write equispaced. So these holes should be, uh, each conjective hole should be at 90 degree with respect to each other. So I would recommend you to go through the uh, notes or the reading material on geometric tolerances because we will need this concept uh, repeatedly in this course, especially once designing the inspection tooling. Thank you very much.